Hi there, I'm Black Bright, and I just want to say hi to all my subscribers. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for your comments. Very interesting comments I've received recently. And um, if you like the video, please give me the thumbs up and share it if you feel it might be useful to somebody that you know. Um, I tend to discuss a variety of topics, as you probably know by now. And today I'm going to talk about the WP, very similar to the... Um, the other video I did recently about how the Home Office is outsourcing visa applications. The, DW, the DWP are getting someone else to do their dirty work as well. They have outsourced, um, what have they outsourced? They've outsourced the ESA contract and the PIP contract. I'm not going to rely on my memory. Um, to the tune of 630 million. I mean, you know, they're talking about they haven't got any money to pay out and they're holding back all this money. And yet, when it suits them, I mean, when you think 630 million for two contracts that have just been extended and then the 91 million for the home office. So who's doing the work then? If they're, if they're outsourcing all these services, what are the people in the home office and DWP getting paid to do? Are they just getting paid to look pretty and to chastise all the customers that come in? Is that what their role is? I mean, because they're not doing the work, are they? So what are they doing that justifies the salary that they're getting? Anyway, let me just read this. Um, the DWP quietly hands private firms 630 million, I'll put my source as usual in the description, um, to test disabled people for benefits. So they've been um, outsourced, this service, and it's a testing service. So that anybody with a disability is going to be tested by these two companies. The firms ATOS and Maximus have had their PIP, which is Personal Independence Payment, and ESA, which is Employment and Support Allowance, contract extended for a second time. So it looks like they can't be bothered with all the hassle themselves. They're either not qualified to do it. So if you're not qualified to do it, get another job. Don't be paid for something that you're not qualified to do. And then you're taking, you know, we're having to pay you a second salary almost when you outsource and pay another um, company to do the work that you should be doing. Um, so what are they doing now? They extended the contract for a further two years, um, which will cost taxpayers 394.7 million for the personal independence payments and then the ESA will cost 236 million 236.4 million for the 16 month extension so they've been in they've been doing this for a while although we didn't know that they were doing it and now they've just extended the contract and this is how much it's costing us to put this in place well, it's not even to put it in place. It's already in place. Um, I don't know what they're being paid to. Well, they're being paid to test. I mean, really and truly, what is there to test? You know, somebody's got a disability. Either it's a physical disability that you can see, or it might be MS, which you can't see. And it would be diagnosed by the GP. The, GAP, the GP sends a letter and they then, that should be enough. Why do they have to pay £630 million pounds to get information? Are they saying that the doctors are not trustworthy? Are they saying they can't rely on that information? Instead, they're putting through people, putting people through some kind of interrogation process, forcing them half at some, you know, some of them have committed suicide, some of them are homeless, some of them are destitute, while they're waiting for the results of these tests. It's absolutely diabolical. That's what they're paying money for. If they're trying to save money, like they claim to be doing, why can they not 
rely on the hospital letter or our doctor's letter. Why isn't that enough? I mean, that is a lot of money. And then they're shortcutting people, you know, by making them wait an extra five, six weeks to get their money. It's probably, ah, oh, anyway, what can I say? Um, I've given some on statistics in an earlier um, video where I'd said the 74% SUPRA had um, had 74% of the applications overturned. That was a mistake. It was actually this, um, the ESA and the PIP that I was referring to, but I had both systems in my head. So it's not good to do similar subjects close together because for that reason. Anyway, um, we're all infallible. No one's perfect. 74% um, of ESA tests and 75% of PIP tests went to appeal and were overturned. So they, they, they're paying people all this money. They're using uh, an automated system like they're using in the home office, which is um, knocking applications out it's not looking, I mean, they're being paid all that money and they're not looking at people as individuals. They're not assessing properly. They've probably got a little machine. It wouldn't be so bad. And maybe I've got this wrong, but it wouldn't be so bad if these people are being tested. They're being sat at and spoken to and going through and they're having an examination and all that kind of stuff. If that's the case, then yes, it's probably justified. But from what I see and what I read, that's not what's happening. They're just putting some figures in a computer and some data in the computer, and it's coming up with some information. And that's what's determining the decision of whether these people, these disabled people and people on employment support allowances are entitled. So what are they paying for? I mean, computers, they pay for themselves after a while. It's not going to cost you 630 bloody million. And you have Excel spreadsheets and you have all kinds of softwares that can give you all this information in a minute once the data goes in. And the thing is, is that once that data goes in, who's putting in the data? The lowest paid people, admin, data entry clerks, who are probably on the minimum wage. So how does that justify all that money that they're paying? And how qualified are these companies that they're employing to do this job? Like I've said, if they've made that kind of cock up, excuse my French, so that 74%, that means they've only got 25% right. They're having a laugh, aren't they, really? They're really trying to wind people up. That's my that's my thing. I think they're trying to wind people up. I think they're trying to um, put people in, making people feel so frustrated and angry that they just go crazy. Because why would they do that? Why And why would they allow us to know this kind of frivolous spending and then they've got the audacity to say they can't find um, people um, to put in our hospitals and our doc. They can't find money to do this. They can't find money to do that. No wonder if you're spending our money so frivolously. Taxpayers' money. People like me and some of you who are paying taxes. And it's to for them to um, pay third parties and sit there probably twiddling their thumbs, taking the pee out of people who are coming in. And not treating people with respect. I've heard nightmare stories. There's this guy called Mark My Words. I don't know if any of you have seen him. Who talks about the DWP. Honestly. He's, he's seen. I mean he's actually had live experiences. How the DW people, DWP have treated people. Now we can't generalise. There's always exceptions to the rule. But the general rule. From my experience. When you go to those places. You feel like crap. You feel dehumanised, you feel embarrassed, you feel humiliated, you feel as though you're a liar, you feel as though you're guilty until proven innocent. And that's what they're doing with the money. 
That's what they're being paid. Those people in there are being paid to do. Anyway, that's enough of me ranting. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye-bye.